And we are back and it's Christmas season and we know everybody's ready to get into the kitchen to bake up their black fruit cake. And we have a treat for you today. We are joined by Chef Eva Longsworth. Good morning. And uh, Eva, of course, has been a part of the Belize culinary team traveling out. She's also uh, an entrepreneur. You're doing donuts now? Yes, chef turned donut maker. I know. <laughs> so you're in Corozal. I am in Corozal and the company is called Doni and Donuts. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we do handcrafted donuts and we're open from Monday to Saturday except for Wednesday. Mm -hmm. With all these very unique and in some cases very Belizean flavors. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So we have a lot of specials coming out for Christmas. Yeah. And we actually have a Christmas menu that's going to run until the end of January. Yeah. And then we have a menu for like the last week in January. We're going to launch for just a new year and something more on the lighter side. Mmm. Well, my favorite is the Makobe one, right? <laughs> so <laughs> that's when you get your Makobe seed upgraded. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, but of course you're here. You, you do a wide array of cooking and baking in general. And today you're going to share a special recipe with us, right? Yes. So actually this recipe is my great-great-grandmother um, Mira Longsworth's recipe. Uh -huh. um, I don't know if she'd be very happy <laughs> with me doing it live in public, but... Um, it's as authentic as we can get because mm -hmm. in her days she would make her fruits way months ahead of time, mm -hmm. you know, in advance, and she'd make the citron peel and everything from scratch. So today we have the convenience of buying it in store. Mm -hmm. Yes. And um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the history of black fruit cake. Oh, sure. of course. Because um, black fruit cake is something that came as part of the British heritage, mm -hmm. and it's actually derivative of something that they called figgy pudding or Christmas pudding. Mm -hmm. and you know, in the carols they say, "Give me some figgy pudding." Yeah. So um, eventually, later on, they started to add flour and eggs and butter, and it became richer and it became a cake. Mm -hmm. When it came to Belize though, certain yeah. ingredients got mixed into the recipe. Yeah. You know, um, like we don't normally have figs available. We don't have figs, so we use the tropical fruits that sometimes you wonder why it's all dried fruits. Why raisins, mm -hmm. why prunes, prunes, why yeah. maybe apricots or why the citron and uh -huh. cherries, fruits that aren't from here. Mm -hmm. But those are the traditional fruits that were used. But a lot of people now use like stewed cashews. They put Ooh. in, um, in this version we're doing, we have stewed pineapple inside, Ooh. you know, um, stewed um, papaya sweet. Uh -huh. chopped up inside as well uh -huh. so you could really get creative with this and create your own version and use what's local because we know the fruits sometimes hit the budget yeah <laughs> so my sweet tooth is so excited with everything you just said but so we and 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 some of the things that we did come around to add um i would imagine uh, as you said the fruits we have some of the nuts and the the blackening now i know from my mother that she's very concerned that the blackening is not black enough. And you were telling me the same. <laughs> yes, so it's actually something that they call it Ingl in England, treacle, uh -huh. and it's a byproduct of the And then a lot of um, food companies use it as coloring, so it's not only used in black fruit cake. Okay. okay. Um, because here in Belize, we have such a vibrant sugar industry. Yeah. Um, in the process, our coloring will get super dark. Mm -hmm. So the cakes would have that real intense dark, yeah. black color yeah um an avid producer that used to make this coloring in belize i think they stopped i'm not i'm not sure mm -hmm. um so you can't really find one that's really dark enough mm. but it still has the same flavor okay you know just so the blackening the does not flavor it just add color it adds flavor and color it adds oh. a bitterness and a richness of like a molasses flavor yeah. as well okay yeah you do some it's baking isani not quite but i'm familiar with it okay <laughs> So, right. you're going to teach us your chef's secrets here, right? Okay, so to start, I have um, eight ounces of butter, which is uh, one cup. Okay. And... Are you specific about your butter choice? Um, yes. Is it <laughs> butter or margarine, first of all? This is real butter. Yeah. Um, I prefer it because it's a more natural product. It's not synthetic like margarine. Yeah. You know, and um, it's something that you know where it comes from. It comes from cow milk. It comes yeah. from heavy cream. You know, you could make it yourself if you yeah. wanted to. Yeah. So, um, and it tastes better. It does have yeah. more flavor. <laughs> so, uh, to this, we're adding sugar. Mm -hmm. So, it should be two cups of sugar. Mm -hmm. um, I actually reduced the sugar a little bit 
because the coloring isn't so dark, mm -hmm. yeah. I increased the amount and I'm adding some more syrup to balance off the flavor. Okay. So okay. it's actually one and three fourths cups of sugar in here. Okay. So if you want, you can go ahead and clean I'm the I'm telling butter. you, we're getting some serious chef secrets here. <laughs> I hope you brought a recipe card so we can share with people because yes, yes definitely. and if you want to help me here oh, you could come measure okay, out this here. flour mm -hmm. all right so we need three and a half cups of flour okay so you cream the butter and sugar mm -hmm. And for how long, everybody wants to know. So yep. the whole process of creaming it, it creates volume in the cake. And it breaks up the butter, par the butter particles with the mm -hmm. sugar. So if you notice the butter that we used, it was very yellow. Yeah. You know? And then when you finish creaming it, it's gonna get pale, light, almost white in color. So that's how you know how much you creamed it. <laughs> okay, so you had two cups? Yes, yeah, three and a half. Three of this? Just, yeah. Okay, so this half, is like, yeah. this is one. What are some of the other like mistakes you can make in making right. a cake like this? So let's start from the first one. Mm -hmm. um, if you cook it in a high oven and the temperature is too high and it's not even, mm -hmm. you have the cake coming out slanted. Mm -hmm. So one of the ways you can fix that is by using a tray like this uh -huh. at the bottom of the oven and you fill it up with water. Oh, you put water in a baking tray? In a baking tray, and that's uh -huh. going to even out the temperature of your oven. Because you know sometimes we get attached to our stoves and they already have a little bit of holes in the bottom? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, we have the flour. To that, we're going to add baking powder. And to know how much you're using, pretty much it's one pound of flour. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we're going to add a teaspoon per cup. So mm -hmm. one pound is three and a half. So we're going to add three teaspoons mm -hmm. of baking powder to that. All right. And then you want to sift your flour. Okay. So even though the bag says pre-sifted, you still encourage people to sift? <laughs> yes, you want to <laughs> sift it again because a lot of times something can get inside the flour and yeah. that's how you know before you're putting it into your cake if okay. it has weevils or mm -hmm. um, also in transit it tends to get compacted yeah. and sometimes it picks up moisture and clumps. Yeah. So you always want to sift your flour right before you use it. Okay, and yeah, that's yeah. another tip. Yeah. So to this we're also incorporating the um, baking powder and the flour evenly when you sift it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the key things. Maybe you could finish off sure. that. Eva said she's not here to work alone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so okay. you want to cream that a little bit more. Yeah, I got some clumps of butter on my mix, okay. stuck in my mixer. Okay, and then after you do that, we're going okay. to add some spices to the flour. So this is where the cake picks up its flavor. And we're going to use one eighth of a teaspoon of allspice. So how much is one eighth of a teaspoon? Pretty much a pinch. And then we're going to put a teaspoon of cinnamon. To that mixture as well. And we're going to put a half a teaspoon. It is struggle though, but they <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> of ginger. I know. I know the secret ingredient here is pretty much not that secret at all. Is nutmeg. Oh. So you always want to use a fresh nutmeg. Yeah. And it looks like a pretty much like a seed, like a plum seed. Mm -hmm. And if you could always buy it whole instead of ground, you get more flavor. Yeah. When you braid it before using. And this is something that we're eyeballing here, so you're just going to use it until it's enough. <laughs> or you don't want to overdo it because it's a very pungent spice, so just yeah. keep that in mind. But some people like it, so you can add a little bit extra. Right. Now to this mixture that we have here, just want to put that aside. Uh -huh. 
and we're going to take our fruits that was pre-prepared. So the fruits here have been soaking for a week in rum. And the one thing different that we have here is some stewed pineapple. Mm -hmm. So what this does, it adds a little bit of um, more moisture okay, to but the you, mix. Can you tell us that process of how you, how you did that? So yeah. traditionally you take the fruits and you put them in dark rum. Or any as kind dark of rum. rum or any mm -hmm. kind you prefer. Yeah. You could also use brandy as well if you like. Yeah. So some people cook the brandy in the stove on the stove with the fruits. With the fruits. Mm -hmm. I right. think you're wasting the alcohol pretty much. Oh okay. <laughs> in that scenario. So what we do is I use a little bit of sugar and water. Mm -hmm. Or you could add some maybe like some orange juice if you'd like to, to, that to cook it. To cook it. And when it starts to get plump and juicy, you take it off the stove and then you add your rum okay. directly to it and have it soak for at least a week. And you keep it in your fridge. Because you're going to burn off the alcohol if you cook when it in, in there. And you're eventually going to bake it anyway, but yeah. that's how you get most of the flavor and the moisture of the rum into the fruits oh, okay. by soaking it ahead. And then the stewed pineapple, how do you make that? Okay, so we just put it in a saucepan, add a little bit of sugar mm -hmm. and cook it down until it's a little bit soft. Okay, does it change? Because it's a regular yellow. It doesn't change color or anything no, like that. It's just gonna stay right, just yellow like that. Just. And you mix that with the liquid in with the fruits? Yes. All right. And in the fruits have the cherries already and the citron and, and everything. And I'm just gonna strain out this liquid here. Mm. And we're going to reserve all of that niceness. All that I know, that right? <laughs> <laughs> That's alcohol syrup. <laughs> yes. It so, doesn't get yummier than that. <laughs> so we have it here pre-measured. So I like the fruit cake to be really loaded. So yeah. I have two pounds of fruits here mm -hmm. already measured out. Mm -hmm. Right? And then... You can smell it. Oh, it smells so nice though. <laughs> we're going to put this over here and then this is what we're going to mix with even more rum mm -hmm. to moisten the Let's cake later it. on. <laughs> so... We're going to add the fruits oh, to this bowl. Wow. And it's one thing, one mistake that happens when you're baking mm -hmm. is that people say my fruits fall to the bottom. Yeah. So to prevent that, what you want to do is flour is them. You're going exactly. You're going to drench them in some flour. Mm -hmm. And then just mix it. So I'm thinking Is this good? You want to cream it a little, a little bit, bit more. more. So what consistency are we going for? It's going to be light, fluffy, and it's going to actually change in color. Okay. So it's going to be a little bit paler than that. Do I mix this or do you I? You go ahead and mix it. I remember as kids, we used to have to do this by hand and help my mom. That's true. Ugh. So we're going to use five eggs. Okay. You started with how much um, flour? We started with a pound of flour. Mm -hmm. A pound of flour. Which is equivalent to three and one, one third cups of flour. And you do your eggs separately? Yeah. So we're just gonna put it here in one bowl. Okay. All right. Look at all the tips we've gotten so far. So first of all, real butter. Secondly, real butter, yes. flour your fruit. All right. Also, add some nutmeg, fresh nutmeg, more importantly. I like to add the essence that I'm using directly into the butter okay. and the sugar mixture because I think when you're adding your eggs, it's going to get more incorporated. Okay. So we're going to add... Are we good? Mm -hmm. Sorry. We're going to add to this a half a teaspoon of pineapple essence. Ooh. And then we're going to use a teaspoon of rum. All right. So we did rum essence and pineapple. Yes. You could also use vanilla if you like, brandy, flavored essence, almond essence works good in the cake as well. Okay. Just mix this up. And that's where you could really modify this recipe. Go ahead and mix that. And then we're going to add each egg one at a time. Mm. 
All right, we're gonna add a little bit more flour to the food. We want it really get loose. <laughs> So you do one egg at a time just to make sure it's properly mixed in? Exactly. Yeah, we need a spatula. Yeah, it's right over there. Oh, oh, there's one here. And mm -hmm. I've been using a spoon. <laughs> okay. All right. And then we have two more eggs to go. Yeah. I think I too have any. So question, why use rum essence and not rum? Because if you put too much rum, it's mm -hmm. gonna change the, um, to get the real flavor, you're gonna have to add too much, it's gonna change the texture of the cake. Oh. Oh. And it might get too watery, and that's yeah. also gonna cause your food to sink if your butter is too liquid. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So you, you advise using the rum essence instead? Yeah. Because you get the flavor of the rum without all the liquid. And we're done with the mixer. Okay. All right. Ta-da! <laughs> There's a cake <laughs> in the making. Okay. <laughs> so what we're going to do with this step, we're finished with the mixer. Okay. And you're just going to fold everything by hand. You don't want to over mix the cake itself. Okay. Mm -hmm. So to that that we have there, we're going to add the coloring. Okay. There you go. And then I'm going to add in the flour just a little by little. And this will make a lighter cake. This is going to give your cake, um, sometimes when you bake a cake, you get tunnels, like little holes mm -hmm. going inside. That's yeah. because your cake's over mixed. Okay. So you just want to go ahead and incorporate everything together, mm -hmm. but you don't want to beat it any more than you have to. Okay. Oh, that's uh -huh. interesting. It also makes a more tender cake. Mm hmm. Mm. I'm learning as you go along. <laughs> and I'm telling you, All some right. child at home just got more work to do. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> just using mixers. And now we're going to alternate with one cup of liquid. Okay. Now this liquid that you put in there, you could go ahead and you can use your milk if you want. Okay. You know, a lot of people use milk. Yeah. But in the old days, because they didn't have refrigerators, mm -hmm. milk was not a traditional ingredient in the cake. Okay. Um, because we're eating it really fast these days and we yeah. make it so quickly, milk is fine. Mm -hmm. It gives it more creamy or buttery flavor. Okay. But we're going to stick with tradition here. Okay. And we have one cup of juice. In this case, it's prune juice. Mm -hmm. And we're going oh. to add that to the mix. You could use grape juice if you'd like, you could use apple juice, you so could use pineapple juice. So definitely staying in that dark tone with the um, prune juice or that's just a flavor that you'd it like? It does enough. add some color to it as well. Okay. So you alternate between the flour and the juice. Okay. All right. And a little bit more right there. So there you have it. Chef Eva says, put away the KitchenAid <laughs> when you're making black cake and go old school for the best texture. That's exactly. What we have here. So here we have some golden syrup. Um, I use a particular brand that's imported. What's in? golden syrup? Golden syrup, as we know it in Belize, is called like Tate and Lyle. They know it by the brand. Ah, the green you know, can. The green can. Oh, I so, love that stuff. Um, this is actually a sugar syrup. Okay. So it has a really strong sugary flavor. And an interesting fact is that they use Belizean sugar yeah. to make this Teton Nile syrup. Mm. So That's we're just like bringing, we're food. importing something back that we have here. <laughs> <laughs> that started here, right? So we're bringing it back home. Okay, so we're going to add the syrup there. 
So, okay, so let's let's refresh your memory head here. You said you you cut down on the amount of sugar by a quarter cup. Yes. Um, because you were gonna replace it with some syrup mm -hmm. and some extra blackening. Extra blackening, yes. So in this recipe, I'm using a cup of blackening because the color isn't as dark as you'd hope to want it for. Okay. And then I have three fourth cups of the golden syrup in there. Mm. Are we done? So that's pretty much set. Okay. And if you She's want telling to do the me flavor, don't over mix it. To fold in the fruits. Okay, and yes, here Isani. men bake too. <laughs> we have um, a pound of nuts already chopped. Right. And your nuts of choice? Um, this is a mixture of pecan and almond. Okay. Right? You could use whatever nuts you like inside the cake. Mm -hmm. You know, I've actually made one with peanuts inside and it has a really interesting flavor. Because yeah, usually it's pecan or walnuts that people yeah. use. You could use peanuts because of the yeah. You know? I like the way you think. Go ahead and add that to the mix as well. You know, the fruits make a difference. And I think when you have your own unique variety of fruits, that's already like stepping the game up on your fruitcake. Definitely. Yeah. I know I have a particular friend. I'm not calling their name. Uh -huh. <laughs> they actually use um, the stew cashew. And it was one of the nicest black cake I've ever had. So how did they mix it in with the fruits? With the fruits, yeah. Yeah, because stew cashew is really sweet, but it's also dark too. It's so also it dark. Blend right in with a black cake. Yep. And then this mixture is going to be folded. Mm -hmm. And let's prepare our pan. Okay. Over here. So I want to take a minute to talk but about... But it's non-stick. What do you have to prepare? <laughs> because you want to be... <laughs> we're going to take this cake and we're going to flip it over. Okay. Right? Like an upside down. Like an upside down. Then, then you want to have a certain barrier to help you with that flipping process. <laughs> okay. Just to make sure it doesn't break, you know? And then also helping with when you're serving and the preservation of it. I like to line the pan with a little bit of wax paper. Okay. Right? So, but we're going to talk about the pans. So a lot of times you buy these aluminum pans in the store. Yeah. And they're very flimsy. Yes. Right? So if you're going to use them, which is good because you don't have to worry about somebody taking your pan and not bringing yeah. it back. You just want to make sure you have it tripled to oh. give you enough stability when you're baking and also for the heat in it. It's not okay. going to overcook, it's not going to cook too fast. Because they're so thin and it's going to even yeah. out the heat. Um, Absorption. And then you also said to fit, take a baking tray and fill it with, uh, with water. water in there? And that goes to the, at the bottom of your oven. Okay, you put Way that to the, the bottom. Way at the bottom, on the floor, surface okay. of the oven. Yeah, and when and then you put the cake on the tray, like on the, the tray, normal tray. In the center, in the middle of the oven. Okay. Yeah. And what heat are you at? We're going to preheat the oven, always it's the first step. Okay. And we're going to do it for 350 degrees or 176 degrees Celsius. Okay. Right. 350. Good. Or 176. Or 176. Okay. <laughs> yeah, a lot of times you have ovens that's made in Mexico. Uh -huh. And you're like, oh, with this, there's no 350, yeah. <laughs> you know? So you're going to look for 176. Yeah. Right? So, you want right. to help me grease so, this pan okay. here? The nuts, is that any? You forgot your nuts. Oh. Okay. So, I'm going to butter the the non-stick pan? The non-stick pan, because we're going to be extra cautious here. This, this just goes against my nature. That's why we get non-stick. And then I also, too, you know, when you have your pans for a very long time, they get little surface scratches. That's true. So you want to prevent any sticking. And we're going to pretend here that our viewers don't have a non-stick pan at home. I got you. So. Now I get you. The safety of still buttering the non-stick end. Uh, wax paper. Mm -hmm. So what I did just now is I take a normal piece of wax paper and I fold it in four. Right? A little origami here. Eh? And then you fold it again and you fold it again. So you get like a little triangle and we're going to cut it into a perfect circle. And how we're going to do that, you're just going to measure at the bottom of the pan. Around the center. You put Around the middle. The mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to Mark that right there and cut the excess when you open it up. It fits! Nice. Right? There we go. So your pan's already prepared. You could do the extra step of flouring, mm -hmm. but with the wax paper that preserves all of that and all the extra mess. Right? Okay. 
So do we have to butter the wax too? Um, no, because the wax already has that grease barrier. It won't okay. stick. But it you can if you want to. And if you use parchment instead of wax, does it make a difference? If you're using parchment, then you want to put an extra layer of butter okay. on top. So how much to fill your pan is always a question, right? Okay. These pans is a two inch pan. Mm -hmm. So you always want to go like three fourths of the way up. Okay. Right? So in that case, we're going to reserve half inch of the pan. Okay. Right? You don't want to overfill your pan because then it creates, it overflows and creates yeah. a mess in your yeah. oven. That's like the first mistake that when you're just baking a cake. Did we put in the nuts? Oh no, thank you. Sorry about that. No, it's not you. It's not you didn't do your job. <laughs> you left your nuts out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so we're just gonna fold this in. And then Oh that's a heavy We're going to it? fill this. Oh that looks so good. Okay. So that's like got three fourths. Yeah. So a lot of people take the pan, mm -hmm. lift it and tap it. What you're doing is automatically sending your food to the bottom. <laughs> okay. So in this so case, I'm like thinking of all the things I need to correct now. <laughs> so in this case, we're not going to do. We're just going to spread mm -hmm. and gently pat the batter in to get rid of any air oh, bubbles. Oh wow. Okay. And then we just want to spin it around. Eva, right. you're like MythBuster for cake making. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and that's because I'm not a baker by profession. <laughs> so then this goes into our oven. Uh-huh, TV right oven. Here. Put it in. And you know in the old days, they say, you know, walk around the oven because your cake won't sink, you know, make too much noise. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's just to keep the kids in line, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so here we have, and out of the TV oven, that's what TV ovens do. I prepared baked cake. Mm -hmm. And we're just gonna run a knife around the edge of the cake. And you want to do the honors of flipping it over? Okay. This is if it breaks, you'll blame me? Not really, it's not gonna <laughs> break, it's good. Eh. Okay. I don't think it's out yet. You want to make sure your cake is a little bit warm when you flip it. Yeah. But in the case that this we is have it cold. Yesterday. Yeah. It's there out. It uh-huh. Ta-da! <laughs> and that's where the wax paper it also helps. Good. Pull yeah. it off. I didn't center it. That's okay. You have a chef trip. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, she's a chef trip for that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> for the and human errors that may take place. And here we have some cherries mm -hmm. and some nuts for garnish if you want to decorate the top. Mm -hmm. And what about soaking the rum, uh, the cake with rum? I'm gonna get to that right now. Oh, okay, good. good. So you want to put the fruits on top? Do your little. You be your decorative own now. Artistic flair, right there. <laughs> and we're oh, gonna. Sandy, your mom is so gonna take you into the kitchen for her black fruit <laughs> cake making. All right. So now we're going to work on the make sure we're going to wet the cake with. So this is the same syrup from the fruit, so it has all that flavor uh -huh. and all that rum. And to that, we're going to add a little bit of a sweet red wine. We're not gonna call any names here. <laughs> but that's common. Most people use that for black cake. And then I'm gonna hit it with um, a little bit of extra rum. Okay. Sounds like a rum commercial drum. Yeah. I know, right? <laughs> and then... A serious black So cake. what I recommend is if you're going to make this cake like a week before Christmas, mm -hmm. you want to start wetting it with rum, <laughs> because that's all. So we're just going to mix that mixture together, right? And we're going to pour over the cake. So your recipe, or this recipe is more like a rum cake because most people have been mixing it in for as long as possible. Um, uh, mixing it in the process of making the cake. 
But this is like rum cake where you put that glaze it's on top. You're putting, yes, like yeah. a glaze. So what we're doing is, is going to keep the more moisture in. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And also the rum has a preservative in there. Yeah. So you can leave it out for a week and it won't stay dry. So oh. every day as you wake up in the morning, you know, and you're wet the hair cake. Yeah. Tea, we're going to take the rum, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and we're just going to rub it. Give it over a drink. The cake. Yeah. And the more you do that, the more flavor, the more moisture it's going to have. Is it going to be overwhelming okay. with rum? Um, I wouldn't say so. Okay. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say so because the base of the flavor in the fruits, you have the pineapple flavors, the essences mm -hmm. are going to yeah. kick in, the molasses flavor from the dark coloring is yeah. going to go in. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't say it's going to be overly rummy. Oh my so god. So you want to wet your cake while it's still a little bit warm. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it could absorb much More. faster. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're working with a cold cake. Of clarity. <laughs> there heat. you go. Yeah. And if you want to do the honors. Ooh, give me. <laughs> oh my gosh, it looks so good. I didn't get plates. Uh, we'll do tissue. So, okay, Eva, thank mm -hmm. you. You have given us so much information and I want to recap, right? So for everybody at home to avoid any black cake disaster, let's go through the tips. Come on, Amy. To even out the... Um, to even out the cooking, put a tray of water underneath in your oven. In your plates? Um, in, in the bottom of your oven mm -hmm. um, to even out the cooking. If you're mm -hmm. using disposable pans, triple it. Triple mm -hmm. it, yes. So, so that you have enough stability and then the heat that yeah. is going to be even out going to your cake so you don't burn the bottom okay. of your cake. So that, that's baking. Mm -hmm. 350 preheated. Or 176. Or 176 Celsius. Mm -hmm. um, what else did we do? Uh, the next tip, if your cake is overcooked and it comes mm -hmm. out too dry, don't worry, you're gonna wet it anyway. Okay. Right? So nobody's gonna know. Yeah. <laughs> if your cake is too crumbly, mm -hmm. that's because you're not adding enough eggs into okay. your mixture. So five seems like a lot, yeah. but you won't pick up that eggy flavor. Okay. Uh -huh. But it's going to keep your fruits together in your mixture. Don't beat down your pan. No. Otherwise your fruits will go to the bottom. Just spread it in the pan itself. All right, that would look much better. And this can be my snack. And we're just going to imagine that this cake is as dark as we'd like it to be. All, All right. right, so here's a, the presentation of the black cake. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Black fruit cake a la Eva and her uh, secret family recipe, which mm -hmm. is not so secret anymore. <laughs> it's like a Muriel Longsworth tradition. I know, Granny Mura Longsworth's recipe. <laughs> oh, thank Do you, you so much. Do you want to taste much? it? And of course I'm going to taste one. it, yeah. Um, but I also wanted to, to remind people that uh, while you're not doing black cake, you're doing your donuts. I am making donuts for Christmas. Are you doing a black fruit cake donut? I actually have something in the making. Mm. So we're gonna mm. see it as a surprise. It's coming, coming out, that's gonna come out more closer to Christmas. Mm -hmm. This is so good. Is that You have to try it's, it. Yeah. Mm. So um, Boy, I would, because I'm booked out, I would take favor. a few orders. Mm -hmm. Like maybe the first ten people is fine, you know. Okay. But I don't want to overcompromise either. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Even the cake is delicious. Nice. Mm -hmm. And you know what it is? It's not like that heavy dense cake that we normally get for, for black fruit cake. Yeah. It has flavor, it's soft, and those fruits. I think I got a piece of pineapple just now. It's delicious. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you for coming in and sharing your tips. You're welcome. I just want to encourage the viewers to give it a try at home. You yeah. know, don't be overwhelmed by it. People say, I do white fruit cake, I don't make black. <laughs> but go ahead and try it, you yeah. know. Um, you'll get the same mm -hmm. flavor. You might not get the same color, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and bring it back into tradition, you know, and make it from scratch. And get the kids right. involved and the husbands too, right? <laughs> Isani was very yep. helpful in that recipe. <laughs> All right, we're gonna go ahead and take that final break now. When we come back, we'll have our wrap up, so stay tuned. <laughs> 